26 years to realize this about Mr. Bean. So we all watched Mr. Bean growing up, and we all know Mr. Bean is a pretty weird character. But I always thought he was just a funny weird guy who might be a bit insane, and that's it. But as it turns out, the answer to his weird and awkward behavior has been right in front of our nose the entire time. And I never realized. So this is the intro to every Mr. Bean episode. He appears to be falling through a light on the face of the earth, as if he was being beamed on earth. He doesn't know how normal people act, and he always wears the same jacket with the exact same tie, because he doesn't know humans change clothes, because Mr. Bean is an alien, and he is acting so weird the entire time, because he learns how to be human. In the animated series Double Trouble episode, he is even taken inside a spacecraft with aliens who look exactly like him and even have their own plushy toys. This would explain everything. I've heard of this theory before, and I, this is a show that I used to watch when I was really young, so it's pretty interesting stuff. Special country. It might be just a few miles away from Venezuela, but the people living there are highly different, and they are not like other Caribbean nations either. Mixed people are over 22% in Trinidad, making them the third largest ethnicity. Now, there is a specific mix in the country. Those people are known as Dugla in the region, a result of the two biggest groups mixing together. Afro Trinis are one of the two big ethnicities. They descend from enslaved West and Central Africans, who arrived at the end of the Spanish colonial era. Now, the next ethnic group might shock you. Indians form just over 35% of the population, similar to what can be seen in Guyana, making them the largest ethnic group of the country. Those people descend from South Asian workers, who were brought to Trinidad when it was a British colony. Now get your DNA report on world-genetics.com, so no need to ask. That's pretty cool, no? I, I always wondered about that. Bro, this, this this right here is very impressive. Like, it it's got to be way more difficult than it looks, even though it looks very difficult. Like, if he makes one slip up, everything gets destroyed. Like, all those glasses are all destroyed, bro. So, I, like, that's that's impressive, man. That's crazy, man. Yeah, you gotta be next level for that. I think. Fun fact. The reason it's called the Guinness Book of World Records is because the book was originally published by Guinness Beer as a promotional item to help settle pub arguments. In 1951, Sir Hugh Beaver, the managing director of the Guinness Brewery, went on a hunting trip with some friends. While on the hunting trip, Sir Beaver missed a shot on a golden plover, and all his friends laughed at him, and he responded by saying, well, the golden plover is the fastest game bird in Europe, and his friends said, no, you're just a bad shot, and this led to an argument over what was the fastest game bird in Europe. When Sir Beaver got home, he began looking through books trying to find what was the fastest game bird in Europe, but he couldn't find the answer anywhere. So he had an idea, create a book that combined all the world records that could be used to settle disagreements among friends. He hired Norris and Ross McWerther to write the book, and in August of 1955, the first edition of the Guinness Book of World Records was released. Initially, the book was supposed to be a free promotional item given to pubs to promote Guinness beer, but it became so popular, they started selling it in bookstores. That, that's honestly so cool, bro. Like, yo, I've been, like, reading those books since I was young, man. I always wondered how they had the same name uh, with, like, the beer. People have always cool. been curious about them. Despite sharing one body, they have different personalities. The sisters became the local focus from birth. In the eyes of their family, they are unique. They have different needs. They even like different boys. So the question is, if they want to marry the boys they like, what should they do? In the medical field, the sisters are a mystery in the medical world because they can do things together that ordinary people can do, such as riding a bicycle and playing baseball. They can even easily drive a balance bike. When they play sports, they are one. But when they put on clothes every morning, they will argue because they have their favorite colors and styles. When they were born, doctors believed they wouldn't survive, but they were lucky. They made it through the most dangerous 24 hours. At first, the sisters couldn't do the same thing without coordination because they had their own ideas. So it took them a long time to learn to walk. As they got older, they started to try different movements. 
After continuous efforts, they finally achieved coordination. In their spare time, they invite friends to go on vacation together. Their friends are very confident in their driving skills. Although one person is driving, the sisters can see in different directions. One controls the accelerator, the other controls the brake. So it takes years of cooperation for them to control the vehicle well. Although their bodies are different from ordinary people, they have been very optimistic since birth. They work hard and their spirit is worth learning from. Hmm. Damn, man. I've never seen that condition before. That's gotta be rare as hell. Oh. It's, it's kind of cool to see how, like, skateboarding is, like, everywhere. It's kind of like music or like hip-hop music or I'll, I'll, I'll say hip-hop like it's just one of those things that like the whole world like knows about you wouldn't think that there would be skateboarding in africa at all so it's pretty cool to see probably works with like uh sports too like uh basketball i mean soccer is like worldwide but like you know what i mean it's just it's cool to see like there's skaters on the other side of the world bro like I did not picture seeing this. And they're, yo, they're pretty nice with it too. I guess there's like, there is everything exists everywhere. <laughs> you just gotta like look up videos or actually like travel and see. What is God? <laughs> Smiling so hard. What do I think God is? Yeah. Well, personally, I don't believe it. I believe in self agency, so I make things happen in my life. So I don't believe there's a higher power. So who created there. the reality that gives you the ability to conceptualize this thought? One, two, plan for the future. Three, live in this reality. Four, make your heart pump beat. Four, give you consciousness. Five, give you a father that loves you. Six, it gives you emotions towards your father. Seven, gives father emotions towards you. Eight, you guys share DNA. Nine, you guys probably share a bond that you can't really explain through science. How do you explain those things? I mean, I would say that's a lot of positive things, but how would you explain all the negatives, like cancer, kids dying of terrible diseases? There's lots of bad things in the world as well, so if God made all those positive things, then he must have made the negative things, so why would he have done that? You're under the assumption that the negative things are bad. The negative things are just the negative things. When you understand that there's positive and negative at an energetic level you no longer see things for what they are when you observe things from a higher position you understand that everything that's happening in this reality is merely an expression of what it's a merely an expression of the human condition because the human condition is manifested in reality so you see wars you see turmoil you see all these things happening it's not pointing at God. It's pointing at our deficiency and our need for God. But God made us, so why yes. would he make us with deficiencies? Why would he allow us to be on a yacht here and kids dying in Africa? That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. And that's the beauty about reality, is that it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be. And you have to surrender to the fact that you may not understand everything. And if an entity that is so powerful is supposed to be conceptualized and completely understood within the matter that resides inside of our head, then it wouldn't be really worth worshiping. Both sides have a really good point, but this is a tough, tough conversation that would last for hours and hours, man. The type of debate that I would like to make with some people, but yeah, bro, it's as a tough conversation. I'm afraid to express emotion, and I think that over the years I've realized that it is a strength, you know, being this in touch with your feelings and stuff. A lot of people can't go that deep, you know. So I wanted to basically. Her now. My baby was the introduction to the character, and um, just discussing her childhood, I guess you can say, and just different themes from childhood was very inspired huh? by. You what know, the? Um, what the just hell like, is that? I guess either my own and other stories of different people's childhoods kind of blend together to create this. Um, Doja cat before. What the? What the? F Bro, what the Let's hell? Let's take it back to the 70s. Um, but that's really, really cool. I, I'm, I'm so grateful. And it feels great. It feels really, really great. Her now. <laughs> so what are you excited to see in there today? Is it your first?
<laughs> look at look at the guy with her <laughs> his face he's just kind of like agreeing with it all bro but like the first girl what the hell i didn't think there was plastic surgery that can do that bro like what you, you can see me you can see me yes damn <laughs> that's like that's amazing Oh my God. Yeah, so that's it. So I'm virtually there, and I'm not there. And I can be in 20 places at once, and this screen is a touch screen, and I can have uh, stats and things here as I'm talking. I can have a QR code so you can buy merch in real time. You can do everything all at once. This can be pre-recorded, so you can have content, like whatever you want. This, this fills so many, checks so many boxes. The clarity is what I can't get over. It's what's so great about it is that camera right above his head. That's yeah. how he would see the audience. He could be beaming and drop the fucking bomb. Like that. That's crazy. Like that. Technology is evolving, man. Like that's next level. Let it go, Tom. Let's go. <laughs> the other dog's coming. <laughs> Bro, kangaroos are like always jacked, man. Like. Yo, do they like work out or something? Why do they always have like huge muscles, man? Like, they're, they're a weird, weird animal, bro. Kangaroos are weird, bro. Damn. Yo. This behind. That's probably like the one of the best like ball control vi videos I've ever seen, bro. Like, in terms of soccer, that guy must be a professional. I've made from plastic waste. This Saturday at 12 p.m. EST, in collaboration with Rachel Cook, we are going to run a Ford F-350 off of plastic diesel, proving to the world that plastic is energy. At NBC, at Fox 5, at CNN, at everybody, the world deserves to know that plastic comes from crude oil and we can turn it back into the crude oil after three years of hard work. Say what? We finally got to this point and we're ready to show everybody that we will not have ocean plastics existing in our world because it is money, it is fuel. So at the news, internationally broadcasted, thank you, Nature Jack. Bro, if this if this video is legit, this guy is about to be like a billionaire, like legitimate. And I mean, like, he should probably keep it quiet because it could be dangerous, bro. It kind of reminds me of the the one inventor that used water as fuel for the for the cars and like it was dangerous for that guy too but like bro if what he's saying is real that could change the world big time yo this guy's nice with it this guy's nice nice with it bro Probably one of the best soccer jugglers I've ever seen. She ain't the pro. Thank you so I'm in Yo! This guy is nasty. Bro, that, that guy's sick. That guy's sick with it. It's like Ronaldinho, bro. Like, what the heck? But if you were never born, how could you have used the time machine in the first place? Achilles and the tortoise. Achilles, a fast runner, gives a tortoise a head start in a race. The paradox says Achilles will never pass the tortoise because every time Achilles reaches where the tortoise was, the tortoise has moved a little. It keeps going like this forever, making it seem like Achilles can't catch up. Ship of Theseus. You have a ship and you replace all its parts. Is it still the same ship? If you use the old parts to build another ship, which one is the original? Seritis Paradox. You have a heap of sand. If you remove one grain at a time, when does it stop being a heap? Barbershop paradox. In a town, the rule is the barber shaves those who don't shave themselves. But who shaves the barber? If he shaves himself, it breaks the rule. If he doesn't, he should be shaved according to the rule. Catch-22 paradox. Needing something you can only have if you don't need it. For example, a pilot can avoid dangerous flights if he's insane. But asking not to fly shows he's sane. 
All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Brain Teasers, that's the next song. That one's set for Valentine's Day. I'm telling you, man, this is going to be a good year. I'm Looper Norris. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate, guys. I uh, appreciate all the support y'all giving me, the likes, the views. It's it's motivating me, um, and it's just it's helping me all around. So uh, I really appreciate you guys, and I'm out of here, bro. That's it. Peace.